Hello, happy Monday everyone. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And today we're going to be making more chevrons for our the back of the Charming Chevrons quilt. So thanks replay viewers for watching and thank you YouTube replay viewers for watching as well. Uh, the links to this pattern are in the post here and uh, we'll be working on it uh, every day until we get it done here, guys. Uh, I see you guys popping in. Thank you live viewers for, for watching. Again, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, it's a time where we can relax and craft and work on a project together. I work on it about an hour and I work on it from beginning to end here on uh, the Facebook Lives every evening. So again, Charming Chevron's quilt. We are done with the entire front of the quilt and we've been working on the back. And what I'm doing for the back is using up all of the scraps we have from the front and making chevrons. So chevrons are the, like the little, the little V's that make up the zigzags. I've been just making these V's and we will uh, assemble them in some fashion all together. I'm, I have like the my main background color is this red and then I'm gonna kind of fill in uh, it with chevrons. And on on Friday we finished we sh finished this chevron guy here. This was as you can see all the scraps. So all of the uh, patterned pieces there. Those are all scraps from the front of the quilt. So we made that guy and we have the teeniest amount of scraps left. So this is all we have left of all the scraps from the front. And I think we can get another chevron out of here and maybe another half chevron out of here. So uh, that is the plan for tonight is to turn these into our last, last chevrons. And then tomorrow, what I'm hoping to do is I'll go over in the living room there and we will lay out all of the chevrons on the floor, kind of arrange them so they look kind of neat. Uh, I might do that a little bit beforehand, we'll see. And then we'll start to cut the red fabric. We have more red fabric from the bolt to kind of fill in the spaces. And we'll, we might even just try cutting all of that. I don't know how that's gonna work. We might just uh, go with our improv piecing way of doing things where we don't measure, we just kind of cut. <laughs> and I might just use a scissors. We'll just cut long strips and uh, see how that goes. But I'll figure that out and that will be tomorrow because I think we'll be done with all our scraps here. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going, guys. Oh, I wanted to show you, this came in the mail today. I got a, a new punch needle. So this is a couple weeks ago, we did a punch needle and we did this guy. So we made this, this is like the punch needle where you can make all the little loopies, but I made it with that small one where uh, it's just meant for like embroidery floss. This is a bigger one so I can put like yarn and stuff through. So you can kind of see, look that hole is big enough for some yarn and uh, so we'll give this a try later in the week maybe and uh, see how it goes and it, it's got an adjustable little bit there. I didn't put a link to this. It is uh, from Myron Jean. Here is her little card. Super cute. But she is an, uh, a, a needle punch person that I found on Instagram and she sells really fun kits and she also sells some of the supplies like these uh, big old punch needles. So you can check that out. I have a link to that here if you wanted to, you know, play around with one of these big guys. And all right, let's 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 flip around and we'll get started. Uh, I think you use monk's cloth. So that is actually, monk's cloth is what I used for the backing of my big hedgehog embroidery. I have heard that that's a different monk's cloth than what the needle punch people use, but I thought I'd give it a try and we'll see. So you do need kind of like an open weave canvas a little bit, something a little bit bigger because you know you are um, putting that really big um, point through there. So, all right. Oh yeah, you started, you did a punch needle, uh, Paula, that's awesome. Bought the regular punch needle kit. Yeah, I love the small one because I can do a lot with embroidery. I have so much embroidery floss, so I like that it fits the embroidery floss, but 
I wanted to try the big one, <laughs> so I got that one too. All right, flipping you guys around. Okay, here we are tonight. Oh, I was going to show you too. Uh, this weekend, I uh, did a little mending, and here is my little tank top, and it had a few little holes in it. You can kind of see... Like it just had a few a few holes, so I I mended it this weekend with some embroidery floss. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you guys. That was kind of fun. That was a nice little uh, getaway getaway craft for the weekend. All right, so this is our first little piece uh, that I had. Um, we we sewed this together. Uh, maybe not Friday, but some other time, and. Uh, you know, it's one of our pieces that remain around. It's actually about the size of this red piece. So I think I'm going to just, it's a little goofy. I think I'm going to just trim it, trim these two things together. So we have um, nice edges on both of these. And so they match. I'm just, I need to get, ultimately, I need to get the uh, two squares out of this because we need two squares to make our half chevrons, our two half chevrons. So I thought, why not layer these together and we can get the half chevrons together. I should have put that on like a nice straight line on, on this cutting mat, but I'll shimmy it around. So I'm just aligning that nice edge that I just cut with um, a line on my ruler, because then it'll be easier for me to kind of just pick Pick an end over here. I think we're gonna go three quarters of an inch from the edge. Uh, yeah, that's probably good. There, so I'm just, um, you know, see it's a little bit bigger up here. I want it to be a little more square. Okay, there we go. We have a whole lot of red left over yet, which is great. We'll use this on the back. And we should have two pieces here that are the same width. And actually, why don't we just go ahead and make those into squares. Oh, so I forgot what we did. We did um, three and like five eighths inches. <laughs> it's kind of a weird, weird measurement, but I was trying to just use as much of the fabric as possible. Okay, so let's get a nice straight edge there. There, now we're all square. So how much snow this weekend? Oh, you're, so your son did... Your son made it up here. Wow, I'm I'm totally surprised, Bonnie. We got, um, well, a little north of here got 20 inches. We got at least minimum 12 inches. I don't know our exact count, but holy man, it started on Friday and never stopped. And it was those huge puffy flakes. Oh man, it was pretty intense. <laughs> It was a lot. It was a lot, lot of snow. I, I'm really honestly surprised that um, your son made it here. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think I think we're good here. This should be our first square. I'm just doing this double ruler thing because it's easier. I didn't want to rotate. Well, you know what? I could. I can just rotate this whole mat. I didn't want to rotate this because I have it all nice and square on the lines, but I can just go this way. And now we can measure the um, three and five eighths. On this ruler, and then I can just cut it once. That'll be a bit easier. All right, so this is our first square. <laughs> Maybe I should have went in a little bit more. It's mostly selvages, uh, but oh well. This one will be a little bit more interesting. So 
three and five eighths again. All right. There was so much snow. Our whole front yard, finally, almost all the snow was gone, and now it's just this massive world of snow again. Oh, it's a little insane. Okay, so we have our pieces for two itty-bitty um, half chevrons. So first up, we need to draw that line on the diagonal here. I've been using this little white uh, sew line um, kind of chalky pencil thing and the white shows up great on, on this red. Okay, so now we are going to put right sides together and we're gonna sew on either side, both sides of that white line on both of these. And we should get two half square triangles out of each of these. And we need, uh, we need the two, we need the four half square triangles total to make our, our chevron. So, all right, let's get sewing down here by the machine. All righty. So on both sides of this white line, I'm just kind of kitty scratching the red to get it in place. All right, that's our first one. We had a little, that just made a funny noise. Did you guys hear that? It made like a little humming noise. I wonder if I have something stuck underneath here. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. All right, so we got both of those on the first side. So now let's rotate it and we'll get it on the other side of that, that white line. And the second one. Oops. Veered a little bit there. I think we'll be okay though. All right, let's trim these up. Oh, you're on your last I Love Home quilt block for hand quilting. Oh, then binding. Good job, Gretchen. Holy cow, you are so far along on that. Um, that's another quilt that is in my not finished yet pile. You know what? I'm just gonna take a scissors and cut these. You could use a rotary cutter and everything, but I don't know, sometimes a scissors is just fast and easy. So we're cutting on the diagonal line here, the same line that we drew that white line on. And by doing that, you know, we drew that line and we sewed on both sides of that line, our quarter inch in. And by doing that, we get two half square triangles. So here's one and here's the other here. And that will make one of our half chevrons. So something like that potentially. We'll have to press it. I'm just finger pressing it for now just to see what it looks like. Same deal over here. This will be our other half. There, like that. So we can either do it like this or switch them around. I wanna keep the like ones together since that's what we've been doing um, this whole entire time versus like mixing up all four. Oh, Terry, you got your iron today? I did not. Oh, man, I did not know they were on their way. Nope, I did not get my iron. I'm still borrowing uh, my friend's iron 
who has the same the same one. I think I kind of like it this way. I like this big purple blob over here. I like I like that these are separated. They weren't um, they weren't when we flipped around the other way. So I think we're gonna go like this. Uh, let's give it a press and uh, see where we're at. Nope, I did not get the iron, but this is this is the iron right here. It's the it's the Panasonic uh, 360 cordless iron. So the base station stays plugged in, but then. Um, this is totally cordless, which makes it amazing. And it, uh, it has two points on, on, you know, it has a point on either side, which makes it nice because you can go either direction. And, you know, if you're left-handed and stuff, you could use it too. So totally stoked. Oh, your tracking says Wednesday here in Wyoming. Oh my gosh, maybe you guys got yours like earlier than mine because I didn't get any, I didn't get any notice that it shipped or anything yet. So I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to check that. Oh, and you got the grippets, Sue, yay! I'm pretty stoked to give those like a true try. So we've used it a little bit before just on some various quilting stuff, but I haven't used it for its, you know, big intention, which is the, um, you know, the free motion quilting. So I'm, you know, we're getting there. We're so close to being done with this, the back of this quilt. And, um, you know, once we're done with the back, I think we'll, we'll press the seams open just because that's how we did the other ones. The other, um, you know, the front, on the front. Ooh, this iron's a little close to my ruler. It's closer than I like. Let's get those guys out of the way. Don't want to melt the acrylic or something. Okay, here, oop, I think I just squished it closed. Have you used the iron yet? Uh, any of you guys that have received it? If you have, let me know how you like it. I'm I'm totally loving it. I love I love the weight of it. Um, it it feels like one of those old school irons from like the 1900s. You know. You watch you use them on your free motion blocks for the back of this quilt. Oh, that's why you check them out, Sue. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, let me know what you think of the grippets uh, once you start using them. I like the idea of it. Oh, Terry, you love it. You love the iron. That's awesome. I like the idea of the grippets. Um, you know, like I said, I haven't really done the full blown free motion quilting with it yet, but I like the idea of it because I can't, I, I'm not good with gloves. Uh, I have just like super teeny tiny hands and I've never had gloves that fit appropriately. They always have fingers that are like this much too long. And I knew that would drive me crazy. So I, I found this alternative, the Grippets, and uh, I'm really liking them so far. Oops, I didn't press any of these other seams open. Let's do that. Again, I don't have a real comparison because I haven't done much with the gloves. And I know a lot of people like a lot of people like the gloves. So the gloves are um, they're just gloves that have rubber tip like fingertips on them, and it helps grip onto the quilt top to make it easier to move it around when you're doing all your free motion quilting. The grippets and what we're talking about are these, and there's two of them, but it's the same idea. They have like the little grips on the bottom but you can just set them on your quilt and then move these around. They're kind of like handles more so than gloves. You use the gloves, Lucy? Yeah, so I might try the gloves just because I know that's the more kind of common thing because I kind of want to, I want to see what I like better. So we'll see, but I'm pretty stoked about the grippets and so far what I have used them on, I've, I've really liked using them. All right, let's hit the front of that one. Oh, you need to get, <laughs> I'm catching up to you. Uh, funny, Lucy, um, you need to work on your back because I'm kind of catching up to you. Yeah, I'm, um, tomorrow I'm hoping to lay it all out on the floor. I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work. Um, 
filming that and cutting that because I think usually when I do that I'm kind of back and forth like I'll, I'll lay it on the ground um, and I'll figure out okay I need a red piece that's this big and then I'll go cut it and I'll sew it right away um, but this time I might just cut a whole bunch of red and um, yeah, you know what? I think I'll just lay it out how it looks kind of fun on the on the ground. And then we'll fill it in with red the best I can. Um, which means probably cutting with the scissors. <laughs> I don't know, because I don't know how we'll do it. Well, I might have, it might just might be a whole floor game tomorrow. So um, I might have a cutting board on the floor or something. And uh, I'll cut pieces of of um, red to match up with the chevrons and then we'll kind of fill it in and then uh, um, on Wednesday we'll start sewing those big pieces to turn it into the quilt and then I, I won't have the full measurement so whatever we make for the middle whatever we make with these chevrons I'll just put a big red border around it all to finish off the back so then that means we don't have to measure as much tomorrow which will be kind of nice. Just trying to figure out a game plan here. All right, so we got these all pressed. So now what's up is, man, it takes me, I have to rotate it all on all sides before I get it right. But all right, now we're gonna press, we're gonna sew these, this edge together and then this edge together. Then we'll have our two halves, our two half chevrons. And then we can sew together for the last full chevron and then I think we'll have enough to make like a, a half chevron so we'll have just like a, a half chevron hanging out here oh I didn't trim these but oh well we trimmed all the ones on the front just so that they were all perfect and the same size I didn't trim these so these are going to just be whatever size they end up being eh, nothing wrong with that Use the gloves too, Susabel. Uh, you have the Mar Marchingers and the Grabaroos. I think that's what I've heard. They're more stretchy, with you might, which I might like for your hands. I'll give them a try. I, I want to, you know, test out both and see what I like. My mom has some. Maybe I can borrow hers. Was able to get a size extra small. Oh, that's good to know, Pam. Yeah, usually with small gloves and extra small gloves, it's still, they're, they make them skinnier in the finger, but then they're still like too long. So we'll give it a go. I'll ask my mom. Um, I know she has some that she uses. I'll ask her what brand she has and what size and maybe I can, maybe I can steal them from her. All right, let's press. I have my like little trio station going. You know, I have my sewing, cutting, pressing, you know, areas on hand here, which which is nice. That's what, how I like um, sewing. I don't I don't want to walk all the way across the room or something to to press. I like having it all within arm's reach here. All right, this is our first half. It's looking cute. Press it open again. All right. These seams are a little bit of a mess, but oh well. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the pressing open game yet. I think we'll just press this to one size side and be done with it. Oops, shoot, I put a big crease in there. I like this one, it's almost matching. We're almost matched up there, but not quite. I like that little jogs happening. Yeah, fine, we'll press it open just because I pressed the other side open. Might be a little easier to match if they're the same. Good enough. 
we'll deal with whatever this is like. Okay. Now, back to the little cutting station. The layout station right now. All right, now we just need to get those two together. Look, this is just an adorable little chevron. I'm, I'm liking it. So let's uh, sew them together. I'm gonna match up. I'm gonna match up this seam in the middle here. Ooh, it's pretty thick because I didn't trim, <laughs> trim the dog ears, but oh well. There'll be thicker areas on the back. We will have to deal with them when we uh, do the machine quilting, but it's just going to be what it's going to be. All right, let's start there. There will be a few areas on the quilt that it will be a little difficult for the free motion quilting because it will hit seams on the back or something like that. So I don't know, whatever. I'm more excited about using up all the scraps. So if that means that we have a broken needle here or there, then oh well. Oop. Get through there. Oh yeah, this is totally stuck. There we go. Had to give it a little tug. All right, that should be a chevron. Let's give it a press. Oh man, I did not match up that that center very well at all, but you know, it's all improv and goofy anyway, so that's fine. Oh, Sue, you got your nail polish from Zoya today. I did not! Oh, no, I'm just, I'm totally trying to use up stuff that I know is almost on its way out because I'm expecting the Zoya package soon. So did, if you guys saw on my email, I think it's still going on, but uh, not on my email, but on, on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page, or it might be in the Penguin and Fish Crafters page, there was a um, Zoya, which is a brand of, of, nail polish and I think it's like salon quality. I got I got mine on sale at a, a salon originally and that's how I found out about the brand. But they're having like a an Earth Day kind of buyback uh, nail polish kind of thing. I think through the 22nd. And uh, if you buy six bottles of nail polish from them then you get half off of all of them and then they give you like a package or something and then you can send back to you can send them back for free any nail polish that you have that um you know is on its way out or it's just it's bad it's too thick or something and they will dispose of it for you um so they're kind of like providing that service and giving you a, a you know 50 percent off of six so I I think I um I did that and I didn't receive them yet but um, I'm trying to I'm testing all my my um on its way out nail polish like this this was really thick so um this pink might be on its way out all right but there we go we got another chevron this is our smallest chevron we've made so far actually it'd be kind of fun to make a really itty bitty chevron we'll see and we have a few little bits you know we have a few triangles we can make the chevron a little bit differently where we where we cut two triangles and and match them up i don't know if i can get four but that's an up uh, that's an option um but here here's that last piece that we have that last kind of thing that we put together Oh, I did pick colors. I posted, Gretchen, I posted the colors um, in the uh, Penguin and Fish Crafters group where I posted that thing on the Zoya. Uh, like, I linked to the Zoya, like, event thing that they're having. And underneath it in the comments, I took a picture of, of what I ordered. All right, for this piece, though, I was unhappy with the selvage that was showing here. So I'm just going to um, fold it back together, and I'm going to just sew along these selvage areas um, just to kind of enclose the selvages. 
and I think that will get us closer to a square with with this piece too, so I'm I'm just gonna do it that way. Versus, you know, seam ripping or anything like that. I'm just gonna sew on the other side of that icky salvage. I know we have a lot of salvages in, in the back of this quilt, but these ones just were a lot more holy and just, you know, it was tearing it apart a little bit. This is a much more delicate fabric here. So this is, um, we're just gonna tuck tuck it into the seam instead. See, there we go. Now it's now it's not in the piece anymore. See, compared to this one over here. So let's do the same thing for over here and then we'll trim those seam allowances so they're not so huge. And that will take care of that problem. Okay. There we go. Now they're all they're all enclosed and we're definitely closer to a square. We can trim this down to a square, but first let's trim trim these big seam allowances. That's our old seam allowance right there. And um, the one that we just sewed. I'm just gonna just take the scissors. There we go. That's that's one. All pretty. And here's that other one. I like using the scissors. It kind of goes with the whole improv piecing of just sewing something together really, really quick. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect lines or anything. I'm liking it. All right, let's just give this a press quick. We got this funny little blue, blue strip over there that's barely there. That might actually get cut off when we trim this into a square. All right, so we want this to be a half chevron, just because we don't have, um, well, you know what? Technically, if we can get four pieces out of here, I have all these, are these all the same size? They're close. Could get a couple. Oh, should we just, should we do it this way? Get a couple half chevrons out of here? We can get another tiny half chevron. I just have to trim on these exact lines here. <laughs> I kind of like this idea. Can do a square there and Maybe get rid of that blue. We'll just do it on this purple. So that could be a really small uh, chevron here. Oh, Bonnie, I didn't yet. I have to, um, I'll have to go into the Penguin Fish Crafters group when we're done here and check it out. All right, looks like I only have three more of these little guys. Wonder if we can get Tiny half chevron. All right, we're getting kind of crazy with this, but I think it's gonna be kind of fun. Well, maybe let's just start there. Well, the other, you know, I don't know, do I wanna do this? The other thing is we could just do a half chevron here. Let's see. Oh, this is a nice big chunk of red. I kind of want to use these triangles now that I'm kind of gone down this road a little bit. I think we're going to do this. I'm just going to trim <laughs> along these triangles as best as I can. I should have done this on the rotating cutting mat.
and I'm not using a ruler. <laughs> That's the fun of it. So we are going to make these half chevrons a little bit different because um, we are starting with triangles, not the um, two squares. So we don't have to draw the line down the middle or anything. Oh, you took um, my advice. Oh, outlining the houses with the applique. Oh, you love the effect. Okay, awesome, Gretchen. Good, because that's kind of what I want to do with, with mine. Um, I think uh, I think uh, Krista, from her book, she calls it echoing, where when you quilt just around a shape that exists, so like if you have a flower or a house in this example, just stitching lines around and around it, and oh, that's cool, so it gave a little poof. That's awesome, which is just adorable. You have to post, um, post the stitching around it in the in the um, crafters group, penguin and fish crafters group. Yeah, and if you guys aren't in the penguin and fish crafters group, do a search on Facebook for it, uh, penguin and fish crafters. It should just pop up in the search. And uh, I will, uh, I will, if you click join, when we're done here, I will let you in. I have to approve everyone. And uh, yeah, then I'd love to see what you're working on. It's just a fun place where we can share share what we're doing. All right, so what we've done here is I had these, look at all these weird scraps. I had these scraps of these half square, or these just these triangle scraps, and we're gonna make half square triangles out of them. So instead of like how we did it before we, where we had the square and we drew a diagonal line and then sewed on either side, it's as if we've cut on the diagonal already. So all we have to do is sew a quarter inch on all four of these, and then we'll have we'll have our four half square triangles. So this is just gonna be the itty bittiest of chevrons. So this'll be kind of funny. It'll be like a hidden little tiny chevron somewhere on the back. Which is cool because we got these mega huge ones, and now we have these just teeny tiny ones as well. So I just want to make sure that they're all matched up. Just kind of kitty scratching them in place. And by kitty scratch I just mean like scratching on the top a little bit because that will just nudge it a little bit. Nudge the fabric so I can get it matched up a little bit better. Oh have a nice night Susabel. There we go. The one thing we have to worry about, ooh, what's happening here? Oh, I may be out of bobbin. Well, sheesh, used up another bobbin, I guess. I'm just gonna throw Yep, <laughs> another bobbin out. This is great. I've been uh, I've been using up random bobbins because <laughs> a lot of these are just old bobbins that I um, just have. So what? Let's use up another one. This one has barely anything on it. We'll use up this little purple one next. This is nice. I'm gonna have all a ton of empty bobbins when I'm done here. I think we've emptied three three bobbins. Yeah, this one has barely any on, but it'll have plenty for our little bit here. So before before we sew the whole back together, I, I might thread a real bobbin for that. Because I don't want to sew those big pieces. Okay, I can't see it all. I don't want to sew those big pieces. Uh with a bobbin that might be going out. There we go. Just couldn't get my hands down in the bobbin area. Figure improv piecing 
where you're using scraps, might as well use scrap bobbin thread too, right? Oh, does this pull out? I don't know. We'll leave it there. I'll sew right over that. I'd like to try that too sometime, Gretchen. Do some um, some hand quilting. I haven't done that in ages, and I never got that rocking motion down. Like, I would love to get out a hoop, like a real quilting hoop. And, uh, um, get a thimble on, attempt to do the whole thimble thing again, and uh, see if I can't get that rocking motion for the, for the hand quilting. That's it's on my list yet to do that. All right, that's our first one. These are going to be itty bitty. Hopefully this, this works. Alright, and two more. Oh, you learned at your chil your church quilt group how to um, how to hand quilt. That's cool. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be the tiniest chevron. Kitty scratched that into place. There's something about all that handwork stuff. It's just relaxing. Super duper relaxing. Okay, we got our four, look, it's like a little banner. Our four little pieces here. So th these are gonna need a, a good pressing. I like them like this. This is what's fun about chain piecing is you, you end up with like a cute little chain of squares when you're done. <laughs> there, baby half square triangles. Oh my God, these are teeny tiny. I might have to trim these, I think. Eh, or this way. That's that time of night when I'm getting picky. Getting picky on this itty bitty tiny piece. All right, we're going the other way. So, okay, let's press these. And um, I think I will press them in just one direction. Then maybe we can... Um, match up the seams a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe just because it's faster. How about that? But I think I do want to trim these down. Just so that they're not so wonky. Okay, I cannot open this. There we go. Oh, Carla Yang! Oh, I hope you like them. Oh, that's awesome. You got some English paper piecing pieces from uh, from Mass Drop. They're good. I like those Mass Droppy things. They're always so tempting. I almost got, I think I said this already, I almost got a collapsible colander the other day off of Mass Drop, but I held off. <laughs> I knew it was more of an impulse buy. We do need a, a colander, actually, because ours is, is broken, but I think we can live with a broken plastic colander for a little bit. Ooh, but I really liked the uh, collapsible one. It would fit in our drawer so much better. But I held off. <laughs> mm. 
Okay, there's one more. The only reason I was thinking of trimming these is so I have real, um, like, nice, perfect squares for this, because I think it'll just be easier to sew, but maybe I don't even bother. There we go. So this is what we're going to end up with. And, yeah, you know what? It's just going to be difficult. I'm going to... We're going to get a tiny, tiny... Uh, ruler out here and we're just going to trim these guys real quick. I'm trying to keep them in the order still. So let's see, how big are we thinking here? Yeah, I think I think we're going to trim these to one inch, one inch squares. Oh no, one and a half inch it looks like. So I'm just um, going on the diagonal here. Rotary cutter. Oops, I already moved. Let's try that again. Oh, I know what's going on. I have a little gripper there, and that's kind of accidentally pivoting on that. All right, one and a half inches. So after that first cut, now I'm trimming it to the one and a half. All right, there we go. Itty, itty bitties. That'll be easier to sew together now. Yeah, and I think one and a half inches was the way to go, just to make sure, because these are pretty wonky. So like one side is more stretched out than the other. I suppose I don't need my rotating cutting mat. This will for sure get everything in line at that. Um, square and that 45 degree angle. They're so small. This is a goofy idea. I was not planning on making this itty bitty, uh, itty bitty, um, half, uh, chevron, but I like it. Then I think this will be the last, oh, I still kind of like the idea of a half chevron hanging out in the back somewhere. And we do kind of have a little piece left, but I do want this done by tomorrow too, so we'll see. Maybe I can cut two little squares out quick and we can sew all at once. When you touch it after, oh, the, the, um, Spaghetti squash. Have any of you guys had a uh, delicata squash before? That's my new, like, super favorite squash. It's kind of a little, they're smaller and a little longer. And um, they're yellow with kind of like little mottled green speckles on it. But you can, you can cook you can eat the, the, um, like the rind, which is awesome. So you can cook it all up. You can just like dig out the, the, um, seeds and then cut it up into like moons, little half moons, like cut it in half, then dig out the seeds in half the long way and then, um, cut it into the little half moons and then you can just roast it and then eat it. You, um, you don't have to, you don't have to get rid of the skin. You can actually eat the skin. Ugh, they're my favorite. So delicata squash. And they're just really sweet and yummy. It's my new favorite. You can't... I, they've occasionally been at our grocery store, but they're not always there. 
I'm gonna just turn this into a, a square quick. Let's see, I got another little piece. Let's just turn it into, we'll make a square that's this big. So we'll, we'll have one little half chevron on here and that'll make me happy. Let's see, it's about, Mm, it's about two and three quarters. So we got to do two and three quarters this way. Okay, that'll do it. So we're gonna sneak into half chevron with our last little bit of scrappy scraps here. There we go. Um, and we need to draw the line on here too. Let's see, where did it go? Here we go. So this one I'm gonna sew on either side, same way that what we have been doing, and then I'm also gonna sew our little itty bitties here together. Little combo sewing action here. You guys, we are supposed to get snow again on a Wednesday. So not only did we get that, that like 12 inches, 12 plus inches, it's not done yet in theory. <laughs> How's that? Ugh. Okay, then these two itty bitties together. It's gonna be the tiniest, tiniest, little chevrons. All right, the other half. And let's sneak in the other half of this guy. Okay, so we got our, this is our little half chevron. I'm just gonna, we'll just trim him down the diagonal. Got the scissors here, so I'm just gonna do it that way quick. All right, so we'll have a little half chevron out of here. He does need to be pressed, but I'm excited about that because we have one of the chevrons that we did is a, a, the a one full chevron and then a half, so like a row of three, and then we'll have like this, little one banger hanging out there too. So we got some pressing to do, we gotta press these. And we'll finish this all at once though, which is kind of fun. Uh, so we got this guy done already, but uh, this half chevron, these half chevrons that we just made and our itty bitty ones will all get done at the same time. So that, that that worked out perfect. And we're not going to trim these down just because. These ones are just so small and so kind of warped that I wanted to make sure that they were trimmed so they were equal, but I just want to get that other one done. In North Georgia, you're in a freeze warning? Oh my goodness. This spring is crazy. All I want is to walk outside. <laughs> That's all I want. I want to walk outside and have it be the same temperature as it is inside. That is what I'm waiting for. And I want to get the garden planted. Ooh, this kind of made like a neat little, little stripe down the middle here. And, and this one got kind of goofy too. I like it. So, all right. So we just have to, oh, wow. I did not sew that <laughs> very well, but let's get, let's get these guys together. 
And we got the other little half chevron. So two more seams and we are done. We'll press it and we'll have a chevron and a half. <laughs> kind of fun. Oh, so this is where we can match the seams. So I did press them to either side this time, not, not open, so I can nest the seam. So I'm just kind of where the, they meet. There's like a bump on either side from the thickness of the seam. I'm just matching those together. I mean, this is tiny. I'm just fixing that seam. It's popped up. So this is just going to be what it's going to be ultimately, but I'm excited for making this itty bitty one. Jeez, you had 90 degree temperatures on Friday and Saturday and now it's 32. Man, you're having, that's, that sounds like a Minnesota spring. All right, and then let's make this into a half chevron. I kind of wanted to go this direction. There, that's pretty. Put the seam sides together there. Yeah, usually in Minnesota, it could be, you know, we could have an 80 degree day or something and then it could snow like three days later. But we have only had the snow and the cold. We haven't had that crazy warm day, random warm day of spring yet. Waiting for that day. All right, we should have a full tiny chevron and then a little, uh, not quite as small, but still small half chevron here <laughs> look at it like we almost have this little like pieced butterfly in here don't we oh it's cute and tiny <laughs> it's so much smaller than um than our biggest one. Oh, it's just so silly and and then this guy here that'll be fun we'll have a little random half chevron in our quilt somewhere in the quilt back all right, let's press it and then we will be done for reals. So we did, we did uh, quite a few things. We did two, two and a half half chevrons or two and a half chevrons um, tonight. And this is it. So I am not gonna make any more. Um, every scrap that's left here is gonna be a scrap that goes in my scrap bin. I don't think I'm gonna throw them away just because I, I can't, I can't. I can't do it. I can't throw away anything, but it won't, um, it won't be in the quilt. All these scraps. But I think we did pretty well at, uh, using up all of the little bits that were left over. I think the iron turned itself off, but I think there's enough heat here for it to work yet. Yeah, mega and mini chevrons, exactly, Lucy. I'm, I'm kind of super stoked at what that's going to mean for the back of the quilt. Gosh, I can't get that one any flatter. I might have to heat this up a little bit afterwards here and give it another press. Oh, proud of um, using up all the, all the little bits. Yeah, so here, this guy pressed uh, well. I think he's cool with the little stripes that are happening. And gosh, then this itty bitty one, so small. I'll, um, when we're done, when I flip you guys around, I'll show you the smallest one here compared to the biggest one. And then we also, we also made this guy tonight. So we just had, we just got smaller and smaller tonight. <laughs> Little trio of minis here. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and uh, I'll show you that big one. Hello. So, okay, here is that size of the small one. <laughs> this is how small it is. It's so itty bitty. So this is the small one. And then here are, here are all the other ones. Uh, let's see. This is the biggest one. So here we are. This is the, this is the biggest one. Can't even fit it all in. And then here's the smallest one <laughs> right next to it. It's so different. There, here, if I hold it really close, then they're about the same size. There we go. 
But yeah, so we'll, we'll, um, the, the big one obviously is going to be kind of the main feature, I'm guessing, of the back. It, it's pretty random. A lot of the other ones are big, but, you know, hiding in there somewhere is going to be this little, little chevron, and then we'll have, you know, this little half guy in there somewhere. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at them again quick. So we have this big one. This is the biggest. Uh, and then we have a couple that are close to the same size. Well, let's see. This is the second biggest one. This is the one that we did on Friday. So this one, a little smaller. And a little smaller. This one's kind of wonky. This one we did, like, this side is bigger than this side, so that was kind of fun. So that's this one. And then smaller than that is the one that we made out of all the scraps. All the like tiny, tiny nothing scraps. We made that new, new fabric out of it. So that one will be a little bit different. This is going to be kind of a goofy one in there. And then uh, the one that was made out of... Uh, this is basically the size and the look of everyone on the front. So this will be a good relationship to the ones that are on the front. Th these were extra from the front. So we had one extra um, amount for one chevron. And then the ones tonight. So a little bit smaller. <laughs> and the little halfsy one. And then the itty bitty baby one. <laughs> so that that's, um, that's it for the chevron. So that is basically pretty much pretty close to all of our scraps from the front used up for the back along with more of that red so tomorrow i'll kind of lay it all out and we'll fill in spaces with red like from one chevron to you know whatever one's farthest this way to whatever one's farthest this way in the same top to bottom and we'll just kind of fill it in I'm not quite sure how that's gonna go but we'll give it a go and then uh, um, that probably won't be big enough because I'm just going to lay it out. And then whatever else we need when that kind of middle top is done, we'll just add red all the way around the outside. So these chevrons will look kind of like they're placed all over, but in theory, the mass of it will be on the inside of this bigger red border. But it'll look like just a bunch of red with the chevrons in there. And that'll be the back of the quilt. So I'm stoked for that. We'll uh, try and figure that out tomorrow. We'll be on the floor in the living room tomorrow and we'll see how that goes. So awesome, thanks again guys. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. I hope that you subscribe to me there. Then you'll get an email when there's a new post up. Uh, so you'll know when, when it's done loading up there if you want to watch again. And yeah, if you haven't joined the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook, I hope you join that as well. And I'd love to see what you're working on. Uh, it's a great place to just share and we can see everyone's craftiness and it's just the best. So all right, I will catch you guys tomorrow again at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. See you later again.